It's with great pleasure that I introduce you to our student speaker, Mr. Johnson Haygood. Thank you, President Alberg, Board of Trustees, and welcome, family, faculty, friends, and last but not least, my fellow graduates. As much as I'm sure that we would like to say that getting here today was the result of our own intelligence and hard work, I think we know that wouldn't be the entire truth. More important, perhaps, than our own efforts were the contributions of all those around us. Considering that, I think a few thank yous are in order. First, I want to thank the faculty and staff of Trinity for their patience, diligence, and their generosity towards all of us. I want to thank my own parents and all of the families whose sacrifices and support made college education possible for my classmates and for myself. I'm also grateful for the friendships I've enjoyed during my time here. I know that I speak for my classmates when I say that we appreciate all those who have made this experience possible. Without them, our hearts, our minds, and our lives would be appreciably dimmer. Finally, I would like to thank President Alberg again for his kind words of introduction. However, I feel that I need to point out an academic achievement that was omitted from his introduction one that really came to define my time here, for better and for worse. I failed general chemistry three times. <laughs> That's kind of awkward, right? Uh, it's not exactly commencement speech material, but bear with me and I'll explain to you why it was the most important part of my college career. I'll start by asking what it means to be successful. I think it's fair to say that failing a class and failing it again and again isn't part of the usual definition of success. I do consider my Trinity career to be a success though because of what I learned. And without the experience of failing chemistry, I don't think I would have learned many of those things. When I arrived at Trinity, I thought I knew exactly what it meant to be successful. That it only meant being right that it meant knowing the answer and not making any mistakes. I don't think that I was alone in possessing that attitude. During high school, being right, it's our goal. It's the metric by which we're judged throughout our time as students. When we make mistakes, when we're wrong, we're punished for it. Over time, I think that being right changes from an external requirement to a self-imposed restriction. Being wrong is frightening. Making a mistake is humiliating. However, I think one simple thing happens when we don't allow any mistakes. All real learning ceases to take place. I know that when I allowed this attitude to control me, the expansion of the world around me slowed, and I was consumed with the terror of being wrong, of not understanding, of not measuring up, of trying and not being able. I suspect that many of you have had similar experiences. What's remarkable about a place like Trinity is the way that it helps us to let go of that attitude. At Trinity, I was taught, along with my classmates, how to gather accurate information from a variety of sources and how to think carefully and critically about that information. Adventuring with my friends and roommates taught us that a good breakfast taco is perhaps best enjoyed sometime after dinner, but significantly before breakfast, particularly in the minutes before Prassel Snack Bar closes, and that the Java City eye opener is very, very dangerous. At some point after turning 21, we also discovered wonderful things about San Antonio, like happy hour margaritas down the street, and how refreshing a good microbrew beer can be after a long bike ride. Our teachers showed us how to seek out complex meaning in prose, in poetry, in painting, in statuary, in music, in numbers, in behavior, even in meaning itself. They showed us how to form our own ideas, 
and theories and to communicate complex ideas in ways that others can easily understand. We learned from each other how to form and maintain relationships as friends and roommates, as classmates and coworkers, as inventors and explorers. I understand that some of my classmates learned how to do a load of laundry without getting distracted halfway through and forgetting it in the laundry room for several days. Unfortunately, I can't count myself among them. It's a process. More important than all this, though, Trinity brought my so-called failures to my attention. Our professors did not allow us to remain comfortable in our ignorance and to remain sheltered in what we already knew. They challenged all of us and they pushed us beyond what we could easily comprehend. Though many of us, myself included, resisted them at almost every turn, they eventually helped us to see our mistakes as opportunities, not as failures, and we owe every one of them a huge debt of gratitude for the fact that we're here today. It may have taken all of four years and change, but now the realization could not be clearer. Shackled to the obsession with being right, I failed to explore, I failed to take risks, and I failed to hear the voices of all those around me who had so much more to offer than I could have imagined. The obsession with fear and of failure left me exhausted, cynical, and lonely. Okay, this is a huge bummer, right? Don't worry, it gets happier in just a minute. I'm sure you've all been warned about being afraid of failure. But the good news, the real good news, is that failure, it's often not failure at all. What my time at Trinity taught me is that earning a degree, it's not about being right. It's about being wrong. If success means learning instead of knowing, then all of our mistakes and failures are just an important part of that process. I was never learning more than when I struggled to grasp chirality with Dr. Erbach, when I made a complete mess of my Latin declensions with Dr. Hirschfeld, when I had to try again and again to impress Dr. Floorsheets with my Huma papers freshman year. What I eventually learned is that being wrong is an art. Being wrong requires courage, it requires patience, and it requires hope. Science is based on guessing and on being wrong. Art releases the power of imperfection in order to communicate raw emotion through images, objects, sounds, places, mathematics, business, engineering, social studies, management, history, communication. All of these disciplines function through risk and reward. Hypothesis and test, work and revision. Of course, this isn't limited to academics. And I'm sure you can all attest we experience our fair share of embarrassing mistakes and misunderstandings outside of the classroom. In fact, looking back, my freshman year seems to have consisted of little else. But not only do these provide excellent material for embarrassing each other at future wedding toasts, but they also help us to avoid pitfalls later in college and in life. Hard work, diligence, honesty, curiosity, all these are crucial to the process of growing in knowledge and understanding. But more than anything else, the willingness to fail and the willingness to be wrong is what allows us to learn. Many people look back at college as the happiest time in their life. I know that I thoroughly enjoyed my time at Trinity. My afternoons spent on the lawns, my evenings with friends in the dorms, my Thursdays at Panchitos, my Saturdays at El Milagrito, even many of my evenings in the library and my mornings in the classrooms. I can only hope that you all enjoyed your time here as much as I did, but let's think for just a moment about why should it be the best time of our lives. College is a wonderful time because it is dedicated to learning. A university should, and I think Trinity does, strive to create an environment where students have the freedom and the courage to take leaps to reach their own limits and expand them outward into a better paper, a more beautiful piece of artwork, a more understanding spirit. Reaching those limits can be unpleasant, and trust me, it was. But the fact that we're standing here today is proof that moving past them 
can be incredibly rewarding. Why should that stop now? It may be a tired cliche, but I don't think this is the end at all. In fact, it's only a first step. The best of it is yet to come. I hope that we can all go forward from this day, no more diminished in our desire to learn and in our courage to fail than on that first day, approximately four years ago, when we came together in solemn convocation of a pledge to dedicate this portion of our lives to studenthood. If we can continue to learn, then we can continue to hope. And if we can hope, then we can love. I'll leave you all with the words of a contemporary philosopher who some of you may have studied in your time here. Jake the dog from Adventure Time. Dude, being bad at something, it's just the first step to being kind of good at something. If you remember nothing else that I've said, remember this. The love of learning, unchained from cynicism, unfettered from the fear of failure, has the power to lift us up into the heavens, to let us walk in the skies. Congratulations, fellow graduates.